Hello and welcome. I am Austin. This is Unenlightened. We are live. Um, we're going to be working on the Bender costume today. It's finally time to start. My other cardboard projects have all died in favor of this one. We're going to be shaping it out in cardboard. The final thing I think is actually going to be made out of either a combination of corrugated plastic and like medium density foam or I might actually make it out of sheet metal if there's a way I can do that without injuring myself. While I'm wearing it. It's pretty likely that I'll injure myself while I'm making it no matter what, but let's get started. There is Creative Corner today. I don't think anybody's submitted. That's fine. That's fine. It'll happen. Eventually. It's just going to creep into your brain. And you're just, you're going to do it. You're going to post it. You're not going to be able to help yourself. Post it unfinished. Unfinished is the coolest phase of art. It's the place where you can see people thinking, like their thought process just frozen in time like a fossil. It's fascinating. All right. So... We are now going to measure various parts of my body. I bet you didn't think it was going to be that kind of stream. By the way, if you thought I was going to measure with, like, numbers, pfft, not the plan. Are we going metric or imperial system? Uh, string. That's giving me a lot of clearance above my head. I don't think this is going to go far enough around. So if I turn it this way, that's way too much clearance above my head. But I have a lot more room to roll it around into a tube. I can eat vicariously through all of you. What are, what are we having? Melody, did you get your Chinese food? What happened there? I have like weak old lo mein. I could eat that and die on stream. Think of the ratings. Death by lo mein sounds so good. I know, right? There is the question of how long it'll take Twitch to ban me for streaming a dead body. I don't think it's my problem at that point. If I'm already dead and I have all the ratings, what are they going to do to me? Kill me again? The news articles will be legendary. I'll finally go down in history. I'm trying to roll this up really evenly. We're getting to a point where it's starting to widen up when it gets to be a wider diameter tube as you keep rolling through. It's going to start to want to get like flat spots. Big wheel keep on turning. Proud Mary keep on burning. Rolling. Ah, the cramping is real. But so is the progress. All right, I have here a tube. Eh? Ah, not too bad. Okay, that's going to go there, like that. Oh, yeah, and I don't have a thing up, but for those in the VOD, there's, there are still stickers. Oh, and the, the store, by the way, looks way prettier now. Okay, this feels a little bit better. The, and see, the thing is... The other reason I want to make the head is this is going to be the part that's probably the tightest fit. So I want to get this figured out because it kind of sets our scale. If I, if I start building the body around the size of my body, that's going to be problematic. And I'm going to actually need to try to find a happy medium between the two because his proportions are not human proportions, right? And it always bothers me when people make a character and they don't at least like try to just make it a little bigger or whatever you got to do to kind of compensate for that variance a little bit. Like, if this works properly, I think his, his the chest is going to stop right about here. My head will be about this far into the mask, looking through the mouth. That would make him, what, like 6'7", six, 6'8"? Six, yeah, and that's the other thing, because if this is raised off of my head, or off my shoulders a little bit, then having it just locked to my head for turning is going to work a lot better. Okay, so this is probably just about the actual right height. Uh, I think it should be doming up like just a little bit higher than that and the actual curve would start somewhere around here. I am in a very good mood today because, well like I said, I've been really annoyed with this all being stagnated and full of stuff and not really been working on projects in here. It's been kind of bumming me out a little bit. So I'm pretty excited to be actually, you know, making something in the studio again. This goes back. It's able to stay fully round. This should give us more or less the shape we need. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. That was it, right? Yeah. All right, now let's pop it into our tube and see how it goes. It is... Oh, it's a little bit too small. Nuts. Well, hopefully my head fits into a slightly smaller tube. Because that's the answer to this problem. Okay, so this should hold its shape a little bit better. So let's make sure it still fits. Oh, just barely. 
but that ooh oh but that can work because that's where my nose is. Where's my sharpie? My nose is touching right about there. Yeah, that's the thing. The mouth is pretty low. It's inset though. This might need to be just a little bit bigger. Wait, why does this feel better? It's not. Oh god damn it! It's not perfectly round. Um, if if this was if this was a perfect circle and I was spinning it around my head, it should feel the same everywhere. But if it's oblong, because my head is oblong, it'll feel better in some directions and not as good in others. Okay, so that yeah, so that's like about that height. Where's the mark? The mark is right here on the bottom of this blue line, actually, pretty much exactly. And if you kind of think about it, right, like if you're if say we're looking at Bender's head in profile, his mouth should start right about there. And that means my eyes are going to be right in the mouth hole for me to look out. Okay, we're just going to go for this. I'm going to start mapping out face features. Go full spacesuit with water cooling. Honestly, I've been wanting to get into this stuff a little bit more, and I was kind of looking into how hard it would be to get or make one of those. Cardboard spacesuit as God intended. It's, it's going to protect me from the crushing void of space with the power of imagination. And like that, for starters, I, I know for a fact that Bender looks weird in 3D. But... So far that's okay. There we go. Plus, like, I could just go busk in... Uh, in what you call it? Times Square? <laughs> Just go busking. Yeah. 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 There we go. Okay, that's not bad. So if I have the mask and I put this on, this should meet the sides pretty nicely. Right about where that was. Look at that. Right there. Perfect. But then we'll have the whole visor section and that's the nice thing so we'll have this all taped together we'll we'll mark everything up and then we can use it to measure off of it would be nice if my face was inside of this I know I'm cutting this in a really weird way I'm using the body of the knife because I don't really have anything to brace against so I'm just like using the body of the knife to brace the knife so that I don't have to brace against my hand and put myself in danger. So while this looks more dangerous, I swear I'm actually doing this for my own safety. Yeah, I like that. It might need to be trimmed down a little bit, but I'm going to leave it for now. And if I really think I need to do that, I'll do it later. Oh no, I pushed on the inside of the head. That, that inner circle that I put in there, I just like knocked it down. I think that's really promising. So what we're going to move on to next, we're just gonna keep working on the, the cranium here. We're gonna try and dome the top. So we're doing the same thing we did for the lower section of the head where we rolled it up to get our curve that we need. Mm, that crease is not ideal. does kind of ruin our shape a little bit here. It's just because it's, it's like a way better fold than the rest of our folds. So it ends up giving to the curve a little more than the rest of it does. So I have to like even it out to make it not do that, you see? Not even close. I was hoping I could just nail it. There we go. Second one was a lot better. This feels like a good way to hurt myself. Isn't it great that 3D printers started making huge strides right after I got one? I mean, it's not enough that it's like a issue that would impact me at my price range. They got stuck because of COVID. Like they were routinely putting them out and then they got stuck because of COVID. Like I'm not surprised that there's a new one. It's about time. And, like, the one that I got works good enough for my purposes, you know. I was never really wanting one that, like, 
I'm not looking for a finished part to come off of it. I'm looking for something that I can make small components and fittings and stuff like that that will help put things together. And this is great for that. And that's that's kind of what I'm talking about, where I'm not sure I'm going to fully 3D print this helmet. I don't know if I want to do that. I just, it's not really like how I like to make things. I am hoping that, at least from a software perspective, some of those benefits will trickle down to me. Well, this is going to end up right in the middle of the... Uh, the connection point, which is not really how I wanted that to go, but that's okay. So I'm cutting these slits so that I can start trying to curve the top over. I drew a, a depth limit for all of these. So I'm just going through and cutting down to this line that I drew around it as my uh, point where I want to start the curve. Right? And we might extend that, but we'll stop there for now. What I'm trying to do is roll these individual little tabs a bunch. Only in the inside direction, but really kind of just chew them up and beat them up so that they're a lot softer. What am I going to do about eyeballs? I think I'm going to go with um, clear plastic Christmas ornaments, painted yellow on the inside with an LED inside. So right now it just kind of looks like his head exploded. But you can see where we're going with this, right? We take all these little fins, we fold them in toward the middle, and we end up with an approximate dome shape. And that's not bad, but it should be like that level of curve. So I need, I do, I need to cut it down a little bit farther. So with a little more distance to work with here, we should be able to close it up up top. I want it all to be solid, because then we're gonna try to stick the the antenna to the top of this. The real deal, I will have to do this a little bit more smartly. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit too tall. Looks like it's like mega, it's mega mind bender. It just this was not one that I was gonna be able to do by drawing out and then making the final pieces first. This one, it's just too, it's too much of a shape to get my head around. That's that's the whole reason I'm doing this, is so that I can just like just put it in my brain. So we are popping these off because we're going to push the inner circle down a little bit until the height feels right and then we're going to trim the excess off the cranium. So I'm going to paint it gold. But I can really only do that if the, if the finish I can do is really good. That's a lot lower now. That's pretty good. I can get behind this. So how tall is my head? It's all the way up here, okay. That'll all meet up nicely. And then there's a slight taper to the antenna. I'm gonna try <laughs> to do that right now, but I wouldn't put money on it. It does look like about the right radius, because if I roll that in on itself, yeah. Kind of bending this out like this and trying to loosen it enough that I can kind of make a little bit of like a cone shaped, like I said, gasket. But how will Bender burp? Yeah, I don't know if I'll be uh, walking into Comic Con with a flamethrower and having a whole lot of success. <laughs> So we might have to figure out a more vapor-based solution for that. Vapor and an LED light, though, that should do the trick. Okay, there we go. Put it in a corner, all set up. Just, I, I'm sure Emily would love to have a life-size, actually it's going to end up taller than life-size sculpture of Bender just in her apartment. I'm, I'm sure that's, that's exactly what she's looking for. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she'd like that. She knows what she's getting into with me. That is true, but there is such a thing as keeping things within reason. And we don't have a huge apartment. One of the problems I always see with Bender costumes, and I'm not sure how I'm going to resolve it, it is also the case with that costume, is that uh, they cheat his mouth 
most of the time in Futurama. His mouth is normally, like, it looks like it's slightly smiling. And realistically, if you're at any angle other than, like, the perfect one, your eyes are going to be, um, well, it'll work if your eyes are above the head. For this, it's going to be troubling. But if your eyes are anywhere below the head, like it is on the picture that you posted, uh, it looks frowny just because of perspective. So I don't know if I want to try and think of a way to cheat that and maybe just make it smile a little bit. But that's kind of part of why we're doing this. As of right now, I'm leaning towards no to trying to cheat it. But you never know. And this will set it back from the inside a little bit and give it just a little bit of depth. What I think I might do, they did it once in the show where they had like his little mouth lines actually make a smile and it looks terrifying. So I don't think that can be my solution. Okay, hold on, hold on. Come on, get loose, there we go. There's also a chance that I'll make this costume out of foam. Like like you would a body armor any any body armor. The only reason I'm concerned about that is you get away with the little amount of foam you have in most like suits of armor because like cuz foam, foam has that amount of flex in it, but you can kind of get away with it because the separate panels move over each other a lot more than it actually flexes. I need it to be really rigid cuz we've got big solid body panels that need to hold their shape in order to still feel like the character. Like if they don't hold their shape, it's not gonna look very Bender-like. He's very big, barrel-chested, and rigid. We've got pretty much a complete helmet here, at least for this stage of the operation. Uh, this, this we can use to guide us through making the full-size helmet, or the, the full or final material helmet. Oh, and I do like the depth in the mouth. It looks, it looks nice. So I might end up making the helmet just a little bit bigger to accommodate that inset for the mouth and still fit my gigantic cranium. All right, still fits. Little, little more of a squeeze, but still fits. Oh, man, that's, that's a pretty good start. I gotta say, it feels good to be making a costume again. Ah, oh. isn't this fun? Looks cool, thanks, Herman. <laughs> I mean, look at that. That's Bender's head. Like, for sure, it doesn't have any eyeballs. But skip that detail. Like, that's, we made Bender's head today. Look at him. <laughs> I think we got all the shapes pretty much figured out here. Am I doing the tiny ball on top of the antenna? I'm gonna, that's what I was starting to say with, I'm gonna try. I, it's gonna be really hard to do with cardboard. It's not like really necessary for our purposes here, so I kinda glazed over it. I don't think this worked, it looks like a thimble. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good man I'm not hating it and we've even got the inset for the mouth <laughs> Lowe's medium bender <laughs> why are we making a bender costume because I want to make one for Halloween and for uh, conventions thank you all so much for hanging out with me it has indeed been a blast as always uh, thank you to the patrons Melody, Jakob, and Hermit. Uh, thank you to the subs. Thank you to everybody who uh, <laughs> bought sounds today. Thank you, everybody. I will see you next time. Stay safe and take care. And uh, so long. <laughs>